Hello there, Ivar by Ivar's Fly Workshop. Today we are tying an Icelandic pattern, all Icelandic pattern called Dirbítur by Sigurður Pálsson. But Siggy Pauls, like we call him, had many really good patterns which, which had been really effective during fishing here in Iceland and they've proved themselves through the decades. Uh, we start by attaching the thread by <clears throat> to the shank of the hook and the tail of the fly is uh, black marabou. You can actually tie this fly with uh, just variations of colors, olive, black, white, uh, pink, uh, just go for whatever you ever, ever your, <laughs> go for whatever your imagination allows you. And I prefer to use a whole marabou feather for it, so one fly, one marabou feather. I start by cutting the stem in the middle of the fly, uh, the feather, and the rest of the marabou I trim off, take take them like this evenly. It's a little bit, you know, hand, handy work, but it, it it is totally worth it. It's just si similar like when I'm processing the marabou while I'm tying, tying a woolly, woolly bugger. And next step is to attach this part of the marabou on the top of the other one and attach that down to the hook shank. And the third piece of the marabou, which is the rest of the feather, is the, are those fibers which are like, we are trying to aim to take like about the same length of them, not all, all, all the way to the tag end, just take the like the best of the prime prime uh, fibers, trim them off like that, and then the, then the feather is like left naked with no feathers or, or fibers on it. And this will be the last uh, part of the tail of the fly. So it's gonna be like a little bulky tail, uh, as you see it on the video, but as you know, when the marabou hits water, the, the marabou shrinks like 80%, 90%. So it's, uh, it's totally okay to keep keep like a tail out of marabou bulky. That's my experience, and that's uh, how we tie those flies here in Iceland. We are not not saving the marabou at all. And to use the rest of the marabou, which is like facing forward to the eye of the fly, that's I do it like this. I just tie it down to the shank of the hook, so you get like a little underbody, and there is nothing wrong with wrong with that instead of trimming them away and get like an uneven part in the middle of the middle of the body of the fly that's not not a pleasant thing so we get to <clears throat> get the thread back to the get the thread back to the uh, spot the uh, body of the fly is made out of both a black channel and a silver channel which i just showed you but before we attach the channels, uh, we have to attach uh, those silver tinsels or the uh, silver flash tinsel, which we have here. And I attach them like this. It's like it's four or five strands, even six. And you attach them just on my side, which are facing towards to me. And then I just lay them over. So they lay, actually lay like in a U. So it cannot... It's like stuck, it cannot slide or, or, or go anywhere. That's the method which I use when I'm putting some sort of a flash decoration into a marble tail. Instead of cutting it in half, you know, you can do that, but this way it's gonna totally gonna stay in its place, like for the lifetime of the fly. And after we done that the next step is to uh, get the silver chenille and the silver chenille is is the uh, <coughs> rare part of the part of the body and then we use a black chenille for the front we attach that down to the to the body of the fly like this and get the thread to the middle of the shank of the hook or about where we want to like stop the silver channel. One here, when it's sticky, when the marabou is sticky, one trick is just to 
get some saliva on your fingers. Stroke, stroke the feather back and it's not going to be in your way. It's my tricks with the marabou, so it's not in my way when I don't want it to be in a, and be in a round. So we just wrap the, uh, the silver channel around the body. One more. There we go. So keep it like a like a bulky body. It's a hook size number six. So it's yeah, a rather large streamer hook, and therefore we want want to uh, you know. You want the body, but the body to be visible, a little bulkier rather than thin. And attach that with a few tight wraps and snip off the end. And then comes the uh, front part of the body. We are using a black chinel for that. And like I said, it depends on the color color of the fly which you pick, which the chinel with what will be the genial color so if you are having a having an orange uh, tail you will have an orange channel for the front body it's always standard to keep the silver channel but you can as well play with the colors it's like <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not gonna it's not gonna bother anyone perhaps maybe the fish so we attach the uh, Attach the uh, black channel like this. I strip off the end, so I get like 10 millimeters or, or, or something like naked. So the thread is like it's easier to attach, absolutely easier to control in any way as well. Then we wrap the black channel around the rest of the body or the front body and make it like tight as tight as possible. <clears throat> this will not do, we have to stop there and uh, lock it in place here with the thread. I'm using an 8-0 thread so it's like somewhere around 70-72 deniers of a thread. This size of a hook will indeed allow you like 6-0 so something close to yeah 90 or 100, 100 deniers. I'm gonna attach to the fly, it's not part of the part of the uh, pattern. I'm going to attach those green rubber legs. It's like olive green and black rubber legs and I'm going to just attach them. It gives a fly like a gives gives a fly like a character and uh, I like it. And if you go to an angling store here in Iceland or a tackle store, you will definitely see the uh, Tirpitur, the fly we are tying. You will see mo they're, they're available with those legs as well. <clears throat> you just have to trim off the ends of the legs just to get it a little shorter, but it depends on your on your taste. I mean, it's it's not mandatory to have any legs on the fly at all. But I I like it with the legs. It gives it a uh, gives it a yeah particular look I like. So the <clears throat> the rest of the fly the, or or the last thing to attach on to the fly is this. Uh, beautiful rooster feather uh, that's the hackle of the feather or the hackle of the fly sorry and uh, we attach it like this I stroke the feather, fibers backwards on the uh, feather then we attach the very end of the feather to the fly snip off the end like this get our hackle pliers well, we snip off, of course, any extra fibers who are stick that are sticking out. I don't, yeah, it's a good scissors for that. Those uh, umpqua scissors I just got. Uh, then we get our hackle pliers and get like a safe grip on the feather. And um, the shinier part of the feather should always be turning upwards towards to you and. Uh, then we wrap it around and we try to try to like control the uh, fibers like backwards. It's going to save us a lot of work when we are done making the hackle. It's uh, maybe perhaps easier to use a hen feather rather than cock or, or a rooster because those fibers in the hen feathers are softer than the than the male or the rooster. But we do it like this. That's it to that thing. I'm changing, just changing positions of the hackle pliers there. And uh, you have to be careful not breaking the stem of the feather. 
and it's just wrap it around and always it's just constantly stroking back the fibers it's going to save you a lot of work when we are done with this when the, and i like to use all the feather for this size of a fly so um, i lock it in place just with one wrap there and then we are going to take like three or four security wraps just to keep it in place then there are some like uh, yeah, I'm trimming off the stem of the feather there, but then there are like, of course, some extra fibers which are like pointing forward, which we do not want. And the method of changing that is simply to take all the fibers just with force and do it like what I'm doing. Just take them, stroke them backwards and hold them and build up the head of the fly like that. It's like there is enough space to do this and... Uh, that should should not be any 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 problem at all <clears throat> and uh, this should be just about fine there are like few couple of uh, fibers which are like which we didn't manage to take backwards but this is exactly how i want the fly to look exactly like this so you get the legs just like dancing there and and the hackle just in front of that then the only thing left is just to make the whip finishing job. We do a couple of whip finishing knots on the head of the fly and then we'll be, uh, yeah, the thread broke just at the right moment. Uh, but yeah, we'll snip off those uh, extra fibers which are not pleasant to have like in your way. Then the last uh, step is simply to coat it with some varnish. We'll do that all around, get the varnish or the thread to drink the varnish in and and I, yeah, it's like this large fly, this size of a fly, I will give two coats of varnish definitely. And then you set it on your whiskey, on your, around your whiskey bottle for drying there and drying the, uh, drying the uh, varnish before you get the next round on. So that's about it. There you have it. This is the Tirpiter fly. This is a really effective fly. Totally recommended if you're fishing for trout, especially. It might work for rainbow as well. I haven't tried it. We don't have rainbow in Iceland. But uh, yeah, the fly is ready. I just want to ask you to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And uh, and thank you all. Thank you all for the great reactions we've had so far. And we have a lots, lots of flies coming up, Icelandic patterns, and we are doing it in English to share it with the world, what Icelandic fly tying is about. So, I will see you guys in the next video, and stay fresh.